Hey everyone, History Mystery Man here coming to you again from Paragon Speedway. Absolutely love this place. Love it so much I had to come back. It doesn't hurt that Stuart Haas Racing NASCAR Cup Series star Chase Briscoe in the house tonight driving the number 71 non-wing sprint car. So of course, as you might expect, we're going to chase him around tonight. That and a whole lot more. Welcome back to Paragon Speedway where the history mystery man is on duty and at your service. Let's go see what's inside. I heard you were going to be here, so I got in my car and drove five hours. So where are you now? Well, I was working for Salem Speedway for a couple years after ARCA, and I'm home full time now taking care of my mother. Okay. So, but I still announce at Salem. So, so I'm, so I'm going to be there tomorrow. That Deaton's not there. There's a new guy, Bill Nisley. How's it? He's, he's 38. He's a young guy. He's doing a great job. He's made they, a lot. He, he's put new bleachers in. He's up too, right? I'm sorry? They're getting like big into the drag racing deal too, right? Yeah, the, the airport that was once next door is now a drag strip. So they don't fly planes in there? Nope. So, welcome home. Yeah. Hour from Mitchell. I yeah. guess this is home for you, yes? Uh, I wouldn't call this my home track, but, uh, you know, Bloomington was probably my home track. You know, that's 25 minutes away. This is where I, I probably raced the most at the beginning. This is where I first came and tested the sprint car, you know, first place I ever raced a sprint car, first place I wanted a sprint car. So this place was, was special and I felt like I learned a lot about just racing uh, at this place. So it's going to be cool to come back. It's been probably six, seven years since I've raced here and three or four years since I've raced a non-wing car. So it's uh, going to be fun tonight. Tell me about the car you're in. Is that your car? You're driving for someone else? Uh, so I'm driving for Paul May. So okay. Paul takes care of a lot of my midget stuff and builds all my midget cars and, and pulls out of Terre Haute and been a great friend. and. He uh, is great, graceful enough to let me run a sprint car. So, um, you know, I'm going to run here, and then I ran a couple weeks ago in Wisconsin uh, wing race. So, you know, definitely thankful that, that Paul lets me do it. You know, he uh, has a really nice car, really nice stuff, and really good at building car, and that's why I trust him with my midgets as well. You know, there was a time when cup drivers didn't necessarily get the opportunity to race sprint cars on their off weekends or anything else. It just wasn't in the contract. Yeah. Uh, Gary Bettenhausen got fired for it. Um, now you're with Stuart Haas, of course, but uh, I'm thinking the cup owners today are a little <laughs> more agreeable to, to the Kyle Larson plan. Yeah, and I think Kyle's helped that, obviously, you know, with everything he's doing. And then, you know, with COVID, you know, the no practice stuff in the cup series and just in all three of the NASCAR series, you know, it's hard to get laps and just be on top of your game and you know, I think the owners are kind of seeing how much better it makes their drivers whenever they are allowed to go and run other things and obviously there's a risk that comes with that but you know you see guys like Kyle Larson you know if he's racing 100 something races a year he's going to be sharper than the guy that's running the 36 cup races a year so this makes you I think better you're more sharp you know for me I, I feel like the, the sprint cars you know just have so much power they're so light you know, it just makes the, the cup car feel a little bit slower, even though you're going a lot faster in the cup car. Um, you know, they just react slower than the sprint car. So, you know, for me, I think it just helps that side of things. And then, you know, just the road course mentality. You know, I feel like road course racing relates a lot to sprint cars. And, and that's one of the reasons the last two times we went road racing, I tried to go run a sprint car beforehand. Do you want to be on the Kyle Larson plan if you're not on a cup car, you're in an open wheel? monster somewhere yeah i mean <laughs> for sure I, I would like to you know i think there's a balance there you know i don't, I don't know if i'm wanting to go run 100 races a year you know but i i, I would love to run you know 15 20 sprint car races you know plus the 36 cup races and you know put you right around 50 60 races so you know, i think that would kind of be perfect for me you know i'm sort of family i got a kid on the way and yeah when weeks. when is your baby boy do yeah baby boy so seven and a half weeks pretty much wow and he comes on his due date so congratulations ahead yeah, of time yeah thank you so that's so cool know, that'll kind of you know play a little bit into the dirt race and stuff i'll have to be home a little bit more but <laughs> yeah you know it's just hard to to do the travel side you know kyle you know he's got it down to science on trying to figure out where to go race and you know it makes it a lot easier when you have car owners that are willing to go run all over the country where you know i, I just like trying to race in the midwest and indiana so you know, I'm not a huge wing sprint car guy in the first place. I'm, I'm more of a non-wing guy. So, you know, non-wing racing is really just in Indiana for the most part. So it's hard to, to really come back here and run all the time when we're all over the country. So, so what is this for you? Is this just fun tonight? No pressure? Yeah, for sure. Why, no why do you do this? Yeah, I, I just love it for one. It's, it's what my family's done since the mid-70s and what I've grown up doing my entire life. You know, all I knew was sprint car racing. So. For me, it's just a great way to come back and, and just have fun, you know, no pressure whatsoever. You know, there's a lot of pressure that comes with 
with cup racing and you know how your results are we're over here you know it doesn't matter if i win tonight or run 15th i'm gonna have fun either way so it's just a nice way to kind of get away from it all uh and then just you know get to spend time with my dad and my grandpa you know we don't get to do this anymore but once or twice a year so it's just a fun way for me to, to keep that connection going and uh you know just come back to my roots and something that like i said i'm really passionate about i, I still watch almost every single USAC race, every single outlaw race. You know, I'm big into the sprint car scene, just even if I'm not racing all the time. So you know, I care a lot about it and want to see it succeed. And uh, it's cool to come back and, and try to give back in any way I can. Hey, we come, you come back home, right? Uh, yeah. We need all of our customers to line up shooting the sprint car. <laughs> Does he stay out or? Most recent here. Coming back up on that side, there's Ken Smith. Chase Briscoe also a winner, and just kind of looking back at some of the. Top of your game, you're where every driver wants to be in the NASCAR Cup Series for the most part. Uh, you got there on a different plan than most these days. I mean, if you got a big bag of money, yeah. you can get there. That's not how it happened for you. You slept on the couch at Cunningham Motorsports for a long time, hoping to test one of their ARCA cars. Next thing you know, you're the ARCA champion. Next thing you know, you're winning NASCAR Xfinity Series racing. Next thing you know, you're driving the iconic 14 for Stuart Haas Racing in Cup. I mean, do you have to pinch yourself every now? Can you believe this happened? Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's unbelievable. You know, if you sit there and talk about it, you know, it doesn't happen, like you said, in kind of the days of World of Motorsports. But you know, that's one thing I'm super proud to say is, you know, I've never brought a single dime to any race team that I've drove for. And, you know, not very many people can say that. You are the exception to the rule, yeah. mister. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, it's not like I have a, a resume like a Kyle Larson or Christopher Bell. You know, I don't have a successful dirt racing background or USAC championships or things like that. You know, I kind of did it the other way and, and just tried to create opportunities for myself, you know, being there, volunteering my time, you know, trying to be the first guy there, the last one to leave. And, you know, the biggest thing for me was just trying to treat everybody with respect and try to treat them kindly, make them want to help me. You know, if you're mean to people, normally they don't want to help you out. And That's not a be, good way yeah, to get there. I just tried to be the nice guy. That never and, works. Yeah, you know, nine times out of ten, being the nice guy, you know, you never know who that guy might know or what team might need an opening and, you know, that they, they have somebody working for them that may have worked with you in the past. So. For me, that was the thing I always tried to do. You know, I went two and a half years volunteering at a place before I got an opportunity, and it just so happened it all kind of aligned at the right time and was able to go win the ARCA championship. And, you know, then Ford's looking for a guy, and I was fortunate to be the guy that they picked. And then, you know, going to running trucks and then the Xfinity stuff and now the Cup. You know, for me, making it to the Cup Series was a dream come true. Um, you know, not one that I really thought was going to be possible, but then to do it driving for Stuart Haas, but then even more specifically driving the 14 car. You know, for me, growing up in Southern Indiana, just like Tony, you know, Tony was my guy growing up. So to, to be able to drive the 14 car specifically is uh, you know, definitely. And you know where that number really came from, yeah, don't from you? A, from AJ, obviously. Of course. <laughs> a lot of, there's a lot of dirt track connections Iconic to that number. number. Yeah, so there's a, you know, there's a lot of pressure that comes along with that number just as a, as a fan base. You know, there's a lot of, you know, true just grassroots race car drivers from AJ to Tony. And you know, even Clint Boyer was another guy like that. And I, I want to be like that too, you know, a guy that, goes and races other things you know that's how AJ and Tony was they, they were going to go race anything they could on any given night and 
you know, I'm the same way. I would love to go run a dirt late model, dirt modified, whatever that is, you know, if the opportunity presents itself. And you know, obviously you're doing that tonight here in a sprint car. Paragon's special for you guys, right? I mean, you're an hour from Mitchell. You won, I think you told me, your first USAC Sprint Car Race here, your first All-Star Race here. What's this place mean to you, Kevin Briscoe? Yeah, it's definitely special to the Briscoe family. Uh, I mean, I've been coming here since I was a little kid, um, probably since I was five years old. I mean, I started coming here regularly in 76, probably. Wow. Um, seen a lot of races here. I've won a lot of races here as a kid around the uh, outhouses I had back there when running <laughs> races. But uh, yeah, it's a special place. Watched a lot of great races here as a fan and I participate in a lot of fun races here as a driver and uh, it's a neat racetrack, a very neat racetrack. It's, it's, a, it's unique for Indiana long straightaways type turns. And, a beautiful setting too. It's, oh it's, yeah, beautiful. It's an older track that's got a lot of history in, in the state of Indiana. My dad had a lot of success here with a lot of drivers. I won some races here and Chase uh, won his first one here. So yeah, it's definitely a, yeah. a special place to uh, the Briscoe family. And uh, like I said, but uh, a lot of Indiana tracks are special and this is one of many special tracks. And I, like I said, I've witnessed a lot of great racing here. I remember being here watching 150 lappers or 100 lappers. Or I can't imagine a 150 lap sprint car race on dirt. Oh yeah, yeah. When, when I was younger, that was uh, one of the races they had here. I actually won a hundred lapper here, the Mike Johnson Memorial. Driver, wow. Daryl Tate, yeah. Um, did they ha take a break in the hundred laps? Did you come um, in halfway? I don't remember here if they did hop stop when I won their hundred lapper. They took a, a break at halfway point, but uh, back in the day, they ran a lot of races a lot. A hundred, hundred fifty, and fifty lapper was a norm of a lot of races back in then. Races have got shorter and shorter as the days have gone on. Yeah. That's one of the things I wish would change. I think that getting back to the longer all, races, all, all big races should be minimum of 40 laps. I think 50 would be great because the race just changes so much within a race. Sure, sure. Here's my million dollar question. So you had a lot of success in your career over the decades. What's more gratifying for you as a father, the success you had or the success you see your son having now? Most definitely the success my son has is, satisfies me way more than my own. Um, just, in, you know, actually it's both my kids. Just that they're good kids, you know. Good, that, that means more to me than anything. And, uh, but yeah, just watching him succeed and her succeed in dance, I've been blessed. I've been really blessed. Uh, so your daughter dances? Yeah, she's a dancer. She's really? won state title championships. and. And, uh, she's what a, kind of dance? She was on a high school dance team, jazz, uh, palm, kick. She did solos, and her school team is really, really good. The Mitchell Stingers, they've won uh, state titles, and uh, numerous state titles, and that's her passion. And, and she actually teaches dance now as a, and a coach with the team now. And, and like I said, both of my kids have been successful in what they've done, but most importantly, they're, they're just good kids. That, that's the perfect thing to say, coming from a father. I like that. Thanks for your time, Kevin. I hey, appreciate no you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, the events will be giving those away here later on with the tribute. Yeah, the qualifying group number one was this minute, kind of a 20, 7832. Let's declare it. Chase, too early to tell? Uh, I think the car is way better than the driver. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, it's not, I don't know, it's hard to get back after three or four years. 
only yeah. three laps, so. It's gonna take, know. It's gonna take some time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Maybe not even by the end of the night. I don't know. I don't know. But nonetheless, he's taking his position on E.J. Hopkins. He's gonna try to go from the outside of row two to the lead. Now E.J. Hopkins reloads down the back straightaway. He's to the inside of that zero four. Now he's gonna go from the outside of row two to the lead. Now he's gonna try pressure of corporate America and cup how do you do it are you still adjusting to it the people pulling on your time as they are you're not used to that are you no it's definitely totally different than anything I'm used to you know really the, I've, I've been in stock car racing or just NASCAR in a very short window you know you were there from the beginning in 2016 that was only you know four or five years ago so I've, I've went through the ranks pretty quickly and just seeing the differences you know from the Arca series then you go to the truck series and you think the truck series is fairly busy then you go to Xfinity and there's a lot more commitments. And then the cup side, you know, it's a it's a totally different ball game, you know, with, with meetings and aero meetings and competition meetings and just all the things that you didn't really realize went into it whenever you're growing up, um, you know, and just other things like you were mentioning, just the, the sponsor side of it, you know, the different videos, video needs for them, photo needs, you know, commercials, whatever that may be, appearances, there's just a lot that goes into it outside of driving the race car. And, that's something that's been very eye-opening for me, you know, just being my first year right now. So it's uh, been interesting to say the least. Um, but yeah, loving it so far. It's, it's been like like you said earlier. It's a dream come true for me to be here. And, uh, just fortunate to be the guy that gets to do it. Does Tony Stewart from time to time want to sit you down and talk about your program, where it could be improved? Is that something that's part of your day? Uh, not not a day-to-day -day thing, um, but we have our competition meetings typically on Tuesday and you know Tony obviously doesn't live in the Charlotte area But you know, he'll call in do our meetings. He was actually in town just this last week and actually came and sat and you know I think we had a two and a half hour long competition meeting So he's there, you know trying to do what he can, you know, obviously he's a little bit removed from it You know, he's doing a lot of different things now whether it's the drag racing stuff or sprint car racing still and then obviously the NASCAR stuff so you know, he tries to be as big of a help as he can and for me you know, Tony's been a huge, you know, asset for me to be able to have, um, you know, just understanding kind of my lingo. You know, he, he knows what I grew up doing because he can relate to it better than anybody there. So, you know, for me, that's nice to have kind of in my back corner. You know, if I'm struggling with something in the car, you know, just anything, you know, I can go to Tony and he can only validate what I'm feeling or, you know, kind of help me, you know, with my lingo or just whatever I need help with, you know, just because he's been there and done that. And obviously we grew up in the, in the same type of racing. So finally here, what, what sort of mental adjustments do you have to make to go from a 3,300 pound stock car to a, I don't know, 1,300 pound non-wing sprint car? Uh, a lot. There's a lot of just commitment. You know, these things, it seems like, you know, I haven't done it for since 2018, so I'm sure they've changed a lot. Just the shot game, I feel like. You haven't raced a sprint car since 18? <coughs> well, I ran a wing car earlier this year one time. That's right, Other you did that, say that. I haven't raced for three or four gotcha. years, so. Are you nervous? That. Yeah, for sure. You know, non-wing <laughs> non -wing cars are totally different animals. So, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. You know, that wing sprint car had way more grip than I remember having three or four years ago. So, I'm sure this thing will be the same. So, I'm excited. 
Yeah, I mean, I saw my first Paragon race <coughs> a couple weeks ago, and uh, this place looks super challenging. The long straightaways and hairpin yeah, corners, it looks hard to me. It's super technical. You know, this place is, when it's tacky and got grip, it's it's extremely fast. You know, it's got really, really long straightaways, like you said, and <coughs> a really tight, tight corners. So you really got to back the car in, but, you know, these things don't want to be necessarily that backed in all the time, so they kind of get tippy. You know, it's kind of got a, a normally just, at least when I used to run here, there's a natural kind of dip in the racetrack into one that I, I've heard still there. So, you know, this place is really technical. And then when it gets slow and slick, you know, you have to be so disciplined here to make sure you hit the bottom. And if you're running the top, you got to be really just precise because it's so easy to drive off the edge of the racetrack. So, I'm curious to I see how tell. much of it comes back to me because uh, <laughs> I do have a lot of laps here. But, you know, that was, Not lately. Yeah, I was 13 when I ran here full time, oh, and I'm 26 now. So <laughs> oh, it's, uh, man. it's been a long time, but I'm super excited. It's cool. You know, I was telling my wife on the way in, she's obviously never been here or around here, and you know, just driving through Paragon, it's the same place it was eight, nine, <laughs> ten years ago. So yeah. Outside of the pit shack, being on the other side of the road when you pull in, the place looks the exact same. So. Hopefully we can have a good run. All right, congrats on your ninth place finish at Watkins yeah. Glen. That was super cool. Yeah, the, the road courses have been really good for us on the cup side. That's kind of been our strong suit. So obviously we have one at Indy this weekend. So hopefully we can capitalize there. Yeah, thank you so much yeah, for your you. time and not forgetting about this old PR yeah, guy yeah. from your past. You, I, you're the guy that got my name out there. I, you know what, Chase? I, I have, uh, I know when you guys go on and do big things and I'm, I'm so happy for you and I cheer for you every each and every week. But when you were just coming out, through you through the in your arca days there wasn't a lot of people in that world that knew who chase briscoe yeah, was for sure. and i wrote probably more than a hundred stories on you with cunningham motorsports yeah. and i wrote so much and published you on the home page all the time it, to the point where other drivers <laughs> were getting ticked off and say well, why another chase briscoe story i just think this kid's going somewhere man i don't know well, i appreciate it yeah so so and I appreciate you not forgetting me. Oh, I mean, and I and, uh, and that's really cool. That's important. Yeah, yeah, and man. I appreciate you. I wish you all the best tonight. Yeah. It, Welcome it, home. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Chase Briscoe. Uh, but this will be joined on the album. Chase started in the 15th spot. It's up to six. Yeah. Chase Briscoe, 14th to fourth. I call that a really good night. How do you see it? Yeah, you know, I felt like I definitely got better. You know, I wish we we fought motor issues through qual or hot last qualifying, then a heat race, and finally fixed them there for the future. And it was night and day. So, you know, I wish we could have started more up front. You know, that heat race went, up, went a little bit different, but yeah, I felt like I, you know, I felt. I'm more comfortable at the end of the night for sure than at the beginning. So you know, I wish I could have got an open ride maybe or something where we could have adjusted on it there in the middle of the race. We were just too free. So I don't, I don't know if we would have had anything for the guy that won. I feel like you know, I could have for sure ran second if I was just a little bit tighter. So 
yeah, it felt good to, to come back and, and be competitive. You know, after the heat race, you know, I was kind of questioning myself and, you know, to be able to get through there, you know, there's quite a few guys that, that got tore that were the, the good guys, but I still felt like I was, you know, dicing up a decent amount. You know, I just, I don't want to tear anybody's car up when I'm just sitting here running one race. So, you know, there's a couple times I probably could have thrown sliders and, you know, I just didn't take it all away and let the guy drive back around and just trying to, to be nice. You know, don't don't want to tear anybody's stuff up. So it was fun though. You know, uh, looking forward to running the midget next week at Indy. And you know, I, don't, I don't know when my next race will be. It'll probably be a little while with the, with the little one on the way. But uh, it was fun for sure. It was nice to be back. Great job tonight. Thanks yeah, so thank much. You. Appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you.